channel i'm taylor page and today we are getting back on track sorry if it's a little loud but i have the fan on because it's a million freaking degrees out today i thought we could chat a little bit because this video is going to be about some of the things that i do to get out of a slump you know when i've had like a bad week because i kind of had a rough week this week this is just going to be like the things that I do to get back on track when I'm feeling a little down. Let's talk about why I'm feeling a little down. I started working as a barista when I was living in Denver with my boyfriend. So I've been a barista for a little over a year now. I love it. I think it's great. I love third wave coffee. Like working in coffee makes me really happy. When we moved back to LA, it took me a few months to find a job. I ended up getting this job at a local cafe. They also served food. I don't want to be too specific. They served food and also coffee. Once I started working there, I realized, oh my gosh, <laughs> this job is so minimally about coffee right it's like i was making one coffee a week if that and so you know working five days a week and the hours were just like a little weird pay wasn't great but i really liked the people that i worked with like i loved the people that i worked with it was great it was a good three months that i worked there i left because i was offered another job that i thought was going to be more aligned with what i wanted to do which is coffee i want to further my knowledge with coffee and to do that i wanted to be a part of like a cafe that focuses more on third wave coffee which is what i'm very passionate about i love doing latte art i love i love it coffee is so i think coffee is so important like for me it's like that's the first thing i look forward to when i wake up in the morning and i think that it's you know, sometimes people go and get a coffee to like cheer up, whatever, you don't know what they're going through. So it's a big part of people's day. It's my why for getting out of bed in the morning. <laughs> Knowing that I can like have my cup of coffee keeps me going. I was offered this job at this like very well-known cafe in LA, it's a chain. I took the job because how could I turn it down? They were gonna pay me three more dollars than what I was already making. I thought, okay, this is gonna get me into more of what I wanna be doing, right? This week was my first week there. I was very disappointed and I quit yesterday after working four shifts and I'm not someone who just like quits a job, you know? Usually I like give it a chance because I know that there's like an initial adjustment period and it can be uncomfortable for me, especially I don't do well with change. I know that it takes me a little bit longer to become adjusted somewhere. I quickly realized that I had been misled about what the job was and I have gone back and read the job description and it feels like this keeps happening in LA. Like I I remember I first when we first moved here I had an interview at a local cafe to be a barista and they offered me the job and the job that they offered me was not a barista position it was a waitressing position so I didn't take the job which is like fine if you want to be a waitress but it's like I don't have waitressing experience I don't want to be a waitress I just don't have the personality for it I quickly realized that with this new job that I was not going to be making any coffee it's fully automated which I'm gonna sound like a bit of a snob and a bit pretentious but <laughs> that is so not for me it's so not for me i really enjoy the art of making coffee and slowing down and manually doing the espresso machine <laughs> yeah so it just was i realized oh fuck this is not what i thought it was going to be right my expectations i'm very i'm very disappointed it's one of the environments <laughs> you'll know what I'm talking about. It's one of those environments where it's like, if you can lean, you can clean. So there's no downtime is like not acceptable. And that's just not my vibe. I don't want to work for some like corporate coffee shop. You know what I mean? Like I've been there, done that. I, it's not my thing. And so I don't care how well known or prestigious you are. So, cause it's not, it's not real coffee. At a certain point, it's not real coffee. It's just syrup. So. <laughs> It's not about the coffee, it's about the syrup, right? That's fine if that's what you want to do, but that is just not for me. A lot of it was mostly table service, waitressing. This job was different in terms of you're a, you have a designated job for the entire shift, right? And it's like, you can't hop on bar to help. You can't do dishes if that's not what you're supposed to be doing. Just very different than what I'm used to. It just wasn't for me, which is fine. It's nothing against the company. It's just how they do things and I'm not going to expect them to change for me, but I did quit. I did quit yesterday and like I let them know my message was very nice to the general manager I said like this isn't for me I was expecting more of a barista forward position and that is not 
the job so i will be not returning <laughs> it was a lot nicer than that you know what i mean it was very formal very you know to the point very much this is not the job that i was hired for and i won't be staying here because it's not going to advance my career in any way <laughs> and so yeah i sent the message yesterday in the afternoon and they never responded they never responded which is like a big fucking red flag and you know i was joking with my mom about it she was like oh yeah they're probably she's probably pissed you know that you don't want to work there which i get but it's like imagine how pissed i am imagine how pissed i am when i left my job that was perfectly fine that job was you know i had accepted that that was a bridge job for me to just get to the next place which was coffee which was what I wanted to be doing. And this, I feel like I'm even further set back and now I have no job. <laughs> now I'm jobless. <laughs> and so that's difficult. That is frustrating, but I'm trying to hit the ground running and just move forward because I'd gotten into this headspace. I started going to work every day and I was like, okay. You know, after the first day I was like, okay, I don't, <laughs> I don't know how I totally feel about this, which I wasn't loving. It was only like a four hour shift the first day, which that was not a good sign. And so I left, I left that day trying to be hopeful and then the next day I went back into work and I was feeling even more stressed and feeling even less hopeful. <laughs> and then I was like, okay, you know, I had some time to myself when I got home. I was like, maybe it's just, you know, a tough transition, whatever. Third day I went back in, I was fucking miserable. I was so miserable and I, that is just not who I am. And I started to kind of have like really bad anxiety like really bad anxiety like to the point where i was like having a panic attack in the bathroom <laughs> sorry i'm looking at my phone because it keeps lighting up yeah my body just was like not not accepting this right it was like we are rejecting this job we don't want it you know and that might sound a little loopy to you but it's like if how am i supposed to perform this job that i don't want to do when i'm like hyperventilating and i was even debating like okay i might just not like no call no show and i've never done that before that's just not who I am, but there are circumstances where that's totally understandable. You know, I was feeling like, shoot, I don't want to go back to my next shift. I went to my shift. I was supposed to be finally training on bar. They go to train my own bar and I made approximately two drinks and I spent the rest of the time not being on bar. And it was like an eight hour shift. I was miserable. It was just really bad. Yeah, so I quit. I quit, I'm a quitter, whatever. I don't fucking care. <laughs> I do care. It's like, I just feel like if I stayed at that job stressed out and miserable to feel this like horrible about going into work, you know, when you feel like this is going to sound a little crazy, but stick with me. I was trying to get those feelings of like, what if a bus just hit me right now? And then I didn't have to go into work. That's a crazy fucking thought. Like that's not rational at all. I, that's when I was like, okay, we got to get out of here. We have to leave. Like, I can't do this. We got to go. And yeah, it's just not the vibe for me. It wasn't the company for me, not the vibe. I felt very misled about what the actual job was, which seems to be a common theme in Los Angeles and probably other big cities as well. Yeah, I wasn't up for it. So we'll see, we'll see if they even pay me. Low key, I'm a little bit nervous that they might not pay me for the week that I worked there. Feeling really disappointed. I did a lot of crying over the last day. I had therapy yesterday in the morning. We just got back from my parents' house last night. We went and stayed Sunday through Monday, and that was really nice. You know, I talked to my mom, she's out of town, but I had talked to my mom, I was like, I don't think I can do this. And she was like, then don't. But when you're like dealing with that level of panic and like that, when your body's like, if you have anxiety, like you know what I'm talking about, when your body is in that state, it's like, we have to leave we have to go we can't do this anymore like there's it's just awful i was like freaking out you know i don't want to be like freaking out at work like that's so fucking lame like a job should not make you feel that way and i've had good jobs so i know that it's like okay i shouldn't feel this way at work everybody else was telling me like okay just give it a few weeks like it'll be okay like you'll adjust like it's normal to feel like stressed about a new job and you know then i get on the phone with my mom and i'm like mom I can't do this like I'm freaking out like this is not this is not what I thought it was going to be like I've been misled bamboozled and led astray help and you know she told me she was like if you're feeling this stressed out about it then it's not worth it you know it's gonna be hard you have two you have two options it's gonna be hard if you stay at this job and it's gonna be hard if you leave this job right so it's like you have to do what is best for you what are you willing to deal with am i out of focus i need to also i need to take some time to learn how to use this camera i've had this camera for almost a year now 
and I still don't know how to use it. Every time I use it, I'm just like, I turn it on and I press record. But yeah, I have chosen my mental health over a shitty job. And I remember when we first moved here, I didn't talk about any of this when we first moved here because I was uncomfortable. <laughs> I was uncomfortable and I felt so fucking lame not being able to find a job and like when I can't find a job I get so depressed like I so I was like really depressed when we first moved here for like months because I was emailing these places Nobody's responding to me like it was just not not happening I had that interview and that interview was really just like disappointing I'm trying to stay on track and that's what this video is going to be about because I need to stay on track so that I don't fall into a depression I tried to print some resumes today, but it looks like our printer is out of ink. Let's get back on track. The first thing that I like to do when getting back on track, getting out of a slump is getting dressed. I need to get dressed. I need to get myself ready. I need to do my makeup because it's so easy for me to just like stay in my pajamas all day and not do anything. Just rot around. I already did my makeup. I showered this morning. I even did my hair. We're feeling good. We're going to do that. We're going to start with getting dressed and then I'm going to take care of some emailing things because I feel like I've really lost sight of why I came back to LA and that was for my modeling contract and I have not gotten any jobs since moving back which is really hard to admit and really uncomfortable because it makes me feel like I'm a fucking failure or something and I'm not it's just it is what it is gosh I'm gonna get in contact with my agent both my agents all of my agents and see what we can do so that I can be booked and busy because I don't want to let this slip away I don't want to fall out of their radar just because I'm not reaching out. Um, another adjustment um, that I'm dealing with this week is that one of my good friends here is moving away and I'm really sad. It feels like every time, this is such black and white thinking, but it is, it's kind of true. There's a pattern. It feels like every time I make a friend, they end up moving away after a few months. That's been really hard to deal with, but I think we're going to see each other before she leaves. She's leaving like in a week which is very soon. And I'm just having, selfishly, I'm having a hard time dealing with it. She's been a really good friend to me. Yeah. So I know that I can have good jobs. I know that I can have good friends and we just aren't gonna settle for anything. It's gonna be fine. Everything's gonna be fine. And me and her will still keep in touch and we'll still be friends and it'll be fine. Let's go get dressed. Let's go pick out an outfit. I got dressed. I'm just wearing this basic tank from Brandy Melville. My Abercrombie shorts that I thrifted. Just got this tank top. I got dressed and then I got a little bit distracted. I'll show you. And I got a little distracted because yesterday was laundry day and I decided to organize my drawer. This looks like this looks really nice compared to what it looked like before. It was a freaking mess, but I'm realizing I'm realizing I have no space. So I need to start selling some clothes because I simply don't have the space for them and I don't know where to put them. And how am I going to wear them if I don't have anywhere to put them? I could get good at layering. I reset my drawer. I am working on putting away the laundry, but it's also so fucking hot in here that I keep having to like put my face in front of the fan because I'm overheating and like sweating so much. I did do a lot of cleaning. I also did the dishes. I'm just working on a few things. I need to put together a list of coffee shops I want to go and check out so that I can make sure that they're, you know, somewhere that I would actually want to apply. How could you really know until you're there? My therapist said that this is a good opportunity for me to practice self-advocacy. I'm going to try and get this email out. I feel like I keep putting it off. You're on top of my refrigerator, so... <laughs> This is my kitchen with my dining room table. It's six o'clock already. Um, I was able to send my email out, but I don't really know where the time went. I was talking to my mom on the phone for a while. For the last hour, she uh, is back home in Connecticut, visiting some family and friends, and she is sick. She got sick from her flight. Um, so hopefully she feels better soon. So I was just checking in to see how she's doing. So I don't really know how the day just like got away from me, but it did. So I think I'm gonna make cucumber water. Oh, slutty. Um, cucumber water because my my dad's love language is planting me a garden, I guess. And you know, when we were at their house over the last couple of days, there's a lot of stuff from the garden that's ready. So I'll show you. 
here are some of the veggies that we took home with us. There's an eggplant and a lot of cucumber and that's a zucchini back there, some bell pepper. And then he gave us these cherry tomatoes from the garden as well. So right now I'm just gonna put on a podcast. I'm gonna put my hair up, it's so hot. <laughs> it's gonna be like 80 degrees in my apartment right now. I think I'm gonna make cucumber water in this giant mason jar. So I'm gonna wash this really quick clean and slice my cucumbers we're gonna make cucumber water and then by the time that's done probably around 7 it's like 6 15 now it's probably around 7 because it's gonna take him like an hour to get home i'm gonna start making us dinner we're gonna do a chana masala chippy curry vibe with some rice and that's gonna be really tasty and yeah and then i still have some laundry i need to put away so i'm just trying to get things like cleaned and organized just so my mind can be like so I can be focused. Ooh, should I listen to Emma Chamberlain's talk with Daisy Edgar Jones? I love her. Or should I listen to Madeline on Pretty Lonesome? I might do that. Yeah, I'm gonna do that one because she's gonna talk about the Ice Spice drama. Tea, okay. Yay, oh, and I love the little video. This week's episode of I love how cozy her this vibe week, is. such a trail throughout the day like you know where I've been you know what I mean like it's just like a mess of stuff behind me right now I'm listening to the Emma Chamberlain Daisy Edgar Jones podcast I'm only like 10 minutes in it's pretty good usually I make my own curry but right now I have this like packet of like chana masala from Trader Joe's so I'm gonna use that yeah let's cut cooking is like such a good way for me to practice mindfulness and so is cleaning too. I think cleaning helps me clear my head and just like kind of be present and same with cooking because I gotta really try not to mess it up so Connor came home, we had dinner, it was phenomenal. And then Swish was on her trad wife shit. Shut up. Every time I cook dinner for him. <laughs> <laughs> you cooked and he's you like, cleaned. He's like trad, trad wife. <laughs> oh <laughs> Yeah, I did cook and clean today. But it was good. It was good for me. I'm exhausted. I took off all my makeup did you? right now, yeah. So pretty. You think so? You're sweet. Yeah, we had dinner. And then Connor was like, I need a sweet treat. So we went to go and get ice cream, obviously. This was the day, you know? I didn't get as much done as I would have liked, but we got to accept it for what it is, right? So I did enough. This is the end of today's vlog because we're just doing one little day together, huh? Me and you. You see me, I see you, we see each other. But yeah, thank you for watching my getting back on track vlog. This was fun. We're going to figure it out. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> okay, well, thank you for watching, and I will see you tomorrow, but it'll probably be next week. Bye!